All right, I'm going to see if I can't get Facebook to work this time in Restream. But in the meantime, before I start up with chat, I'm going to go to my YouTube channel here because I am 30 behind. Let's see if there's any end easy answers we can do. Um, close one side support. Uh, let's see. Uh huh. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Let's give chat a try. Those ones look like they might be a little bit more involved. Okay, so that should be picked up by Facebook by now. So let's do restream. I apologize for not being on in a long time. Been busy, busy, busy. Cool. All right. Now let's say I've got that part now, and then I, maybe I need to change my. Sorry. Bear with me, everybody. We might need to do this title thing. All right, I got three of three. Cool, cool, cool. All right, everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, I don't have anything planned specifically today, so let me know what you guys want to do. Like I, like I sometimes do, I'll go up here to my. Um, I guess I can go ahead and get out of this thing. Let's go here, YouTube. Go to my uh, my notifications here. People will ask questions, um, but I don't know. It might be kind of boring watching me go through here. Um, 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 um. Let's see what happened at one twenty-one here. Shift, so you can go through here and you can start. Oh, okay. Um, well, I guess we can do z-spheres. So, what we can do is if you wanted to model with z-spheres and you wanted to like wrap something, uh, one resource you might like is underneath YouTube here. Hey, thanks. Yeah, we're 2019 now. Um, we can go over here to our playlists. Our playlist. This is uh, my YouTube channel, my playlist. And we did one uh, at ZBrush, 20, ZBrush Summit 2018. Um, I went through and, uh, you know, we did the, uh, you go to Pixelogic's channel, you can watch the whole presentation. Uh, but on my channel, we have a breakdown. And way down here at the bottom, we get into, you know, wrapping curves and controlling curves and stuff like that. Um, hey, my streaming schedule is, uh, I try to stream the first Tuesday and Thursday of every month. The last couple of months have been a little bit crazy. I mean, I was going to stream Tuesday, but that was New Year's Eve or New Year's Day on Tuesday, and then, um, I don't know, I've just been wicked, wicked busy in a really stupid way, so hasn't been ideal for sure, but hey, Happy New Year to you, Happy New Year to everybody, uh, but hopefully uh, my my schedule will kind of slow down a little bit up here in the next couple months, um, but if we go to streaming, uh, one of the things we were messing around with is Mazeeble Zombie Book, let's go ahead and say, load that up. Hey, from London. That's a place I need to go. I've been to. I went. I got to Ireland, and I want to do Scotland and uh, England. That area. Got back from the Balkans. That was really cool, actually. If you watch the ZBrush Summit, <laughs> I talk about that just a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to wrap anything. Uh, one of the easier ways to do that is to just use z-spheres to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and append a z-sphere. Grab that z-sphere here. I'm going to go into transparency mode over here, this little button. Your button's probably further down here. I've rearranged my... Uh, oh, speaking of that, um, I did put up fairly recently, if you go to my playlist here, there should be a uh, ZBrush for Ideation 55 videos. Um, this kind of replaces my Intro to ZBrush Part 1 series. It's updated for 2018 and beyond. Um, it's 55 videos, like I said, and that'll kind of get you up and running in ZBrush. If you want the whole series, you can go to my Gumroad Cube Brush ArtStation page, but this is a pretty decent setup, and um, this will walk you through like how to change your interface and stuff like that. Um, set up hotkeys and set up custom menus like this that you can uh, use and stuff. But anyway, um, I got transparency on so I can see it, and it is right in the middle of my book. So I turn transparency mode on, we hit E, then we can kind of scale this down. And then now uh, we can hit W, we can move it around here, we can turn transparency off if we can see it. And then now we can just use this as a, uh, just a path. 
Now, of course, you don't have to use this. You can use uh, curve brushes or anything that'll give you geometry here. Uh, but this is, I like Z-spheres because it's just easy to control, um, you know, where these things go. And what I'm doing is I'm just uh, drawing on here. So I hit Q to go into draw mode, hold down shift, and that'll make it the exact same size. You don't have to hold down shift. You can just draw on here and make it smaller or draw on here and make it bigger. And you can go through here and you can scale later or you can rotate, you can move, you can... Um, rotate down a hierarchy chain, you can move down a hierarchy chain, you can rotate individual uh, z-spheres here, so it's really cool. And you can also hold down alt, and you can just tap through here. Uh, but anyway, once you've wrapped these around, you can go back through and you can hit Q and you can actually draw more, and then you go to the top here, and then wherever your z-spheres are, you can just pull these things out, and uh, you can add more or less resolution, however you'd like, like so. So now if you've got this, um, there's a plugin you can use called the Curves Helper, and I know we've covered this before, but give me something to do. We've got Curves Helper here, so we have a z-sphere chain. Um, important to note that we have to go from the first z-sphere to the last z-sphere, and one you can't like pull a z-sphere off the back of this one. That's one of the limitations. So you can go copy z-sphere chain, and then you can go in here. We can say like a pen, the z poly mesh 3D. Uh, just a star, and then we can hit Create Curve, and then that'll go ahead and create a curve on here. And if you hide that Z-sphere, you can go to Brush, Insert, uh, any of these curve brushes should work, and then if it, you just gotta tap this, and that'll update that curve with um, that. Uh, if you do want maybe even a little bit more control, you can go back to your Z-sphere, and actually, I almost prefer this, uh, hit A, that'll go into your adaptive skin. Of course, you got to go down here to your adaptive skin and say density of zero, or density of one, dynamic resolution of zero. Uh, do A and then A again. That's just turning adaptive skin on and off. And that'll give you polygons. So if you like this, you can say make adaptive skin. Let's go ahead and append that skin Z sphere. The Z sphere, we can just turn that off so we don't get confused. And then now this one, hold down control shift, go in here to select lasso. And let's go ahead and just pull these little knobs off here. Hit delete hidden, hit control W, make it all one polygroup, and then hover over one of these edges, go to polygroup by polyloop with your Z modeler brush, BZM, and then we can just go ahead and just tap alt, grab these two here, delete hidden, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, stroke, curve uh, functions, frame polygroups here, and now you can do the exact same thing, B, C, or I'm sorry, B, I, brush insert curve, or whatever you're using, and then we can just drop a necklace on there, and then that'll just go ahead and wrap around that, so it gives you a little bit more control over that. Um, oh, cool, well, I'm glad you're able to make um, one of the live streams here. I know I kind of stream at the weird hours, at least where I am. I'm, I'm streaming at 6 a.m. in Texas here. Um, good, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'm kind of just, I don't, again, I don't have anything super planned today. Sometimes I do, sometimes I, I just show up. Uh, I have a problem when I do projections of my high detail mesh to my low mesh. Every time I just try to do it, my low level mesh explodes. I have to start getting artifacts. Yeah, that can happen. Uh, Retopo and Mayan did UVs in 3D coat. Brought in ZBrush to give it the detail. Okay, um, we can try. You know, let's try it. So sometimes that can happen. Um, so let's say I wanted to. So you can see how this skull right here is separate, and this thing right here is separate. This book right here is separate. Let's say I wanted to re you know, retopologize this little middle area here. One thing I can do is I can do a merge visible and that'll throw out a merge book out here. I'm going to append that book. And now this one's all merged. If I want to get, make it a nice envelope and not have these things separate, if I go into hold down, go into solo mode, hold down control shift. Um, you can see these things are still solid objects. What I can do is just go through here and I'm going to go into my um, geometry dynamesh. I'm just going to dynamesh all this together. And what that's going to do is just create an envelope. Um, you can remesh and project, which is uh, we might do in just a second here. Um, but essentially what I'm doing is sticking these all together. If I want a little bit of a looser envelope, what I can do is I can drop that resolution down. Like so. Wait for it. Okay. Uh, we can also hold down Control Shift. And if I just wanted to retopologize that front part of the book, we can do a trim curve. I'm just going to trim all this stuff off. And what that does is slice and then fill hole. Um, and it did an okay job. So at this point, we now have a back polygroup and a front polygroup. If I want to remesh all of this front part here, um, 
yeah, uh, let's see. Let's make sure I don't have anything weird, any weird floaters. This is a little bit problematic right here. Um, I should have I should have watched that a little bit closer. Um, I can I can kind of fix that. What I'm going to do, if I was doing like a game res, this is a really crappy mesh to be doing this on, but we'll we'll make do. What I can do is I can use these little spheres back here, or any shape, primitive shape really, to kind of go through here and kind of spackle or fill in these little back areas here just to make sure that the game res isn't too terrible. And you know what, let's go ahead and I'm going to run a, just an inflate. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe as well. So if I run an inflate on this thing here and kind of shove this back. Okay, that'll help out a little bit. And I've got another problem back here. So I'm going to hold on Alt, hold on Control, drag out a copy of that. When you hold on Control and move, that'll just drag out a copy of that piece. There we go. So this might be a slightly less problematic game rest. I'm going to hold down control, control drag, control drag again. That'll read Dynamesh here. Um, okay, I think that'll work. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to take this polygroup right here. You can see we've got front and back polygroups. I'm going to go ahead and say um, polygroups auto groups. So I can go ahead and grab this polygroup here. Hold down control shift. We're going to grab this polygroup here and this polygroup here, control shift drag, control W, make it all one polygroup. And what I'm essentially doing is just trying to get this front part all one piece. And this is a fairly complex part. Again, this probably wasn't the world's greatest idea. But now what I can do is I can go ahead and get rid of this entire back part here. We can geometry modify topology, delete hidden. And then if I wanted to, I can just Z remesh this result and this will be my game res. Um, you could also des... Um, Des uh, da, 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 da. Jeez, what is it even called? Decimation master this thing down if you want to. Um, it's up to you. Uh, let's try Ziri Mesh. So we'll go to Ziri Mesh. Uh, keep groups we don't need to have on. If we had groups on here, we could use that to control our geometry. But I think I think this will work fine. Uh, fingers crossed. Another thing I like to do is we'll go ahead and duplicate this off. And we'll do Ziri Mesh or down size down to, let's drop it down a bit. And then target polygon count of five is probably fine. So we'll hit zero mesh. Well, that's doing that. Cool, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Awesome. From Brazil. Louise from Brazil. I know a Louise from Brazil. Anybody know Louise Cruel? He's, uh, he works at Houdini. And there we go. So let's say we want this to be our game res. Uh, however, we do have our original mesh here, and if we have both of these showing, let's go ahead and turn off these all these sub-tools up here too. Actually, an easier way to do this, hold down Shift, turn off all the eyeballs, turn this one on, and then turn this one on here. So we just have these two. So this is my original, this is my new game rest. I'm going to take this original one here, have it showing, and then with this one, I'm going to go down here and we're going to do a project all. So when we we're talking about artifacting, uh, you know, you want your vertices fairly close to the surface, uh, and then, so when you project, it grabs most of that detail. So if I hit um, Control D, and that'll be a subdivide, that's just a geometry divide right here, and then I do a project all, Control D, project all, Control D, project all, we're able to essentially, if I go into solo mode here, here's our original high res, here's our new game res, they look pretty identical, however this one, now it has subdivision history, so if I was so inclined, I could take this and I could go, let's go to Z plugin, UV master, oops, wait, let me see if I'm doing something. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, Z plugin, UV master, and we'll say work on clone. Drops it down to the lowest one here. Let's go ahead and, you know what, I think this will flatten fine. So we can do, uh, it's not symmetrical, we can just do unwrap. Give it a second, hit flatten. There's our UVs for it. So now we can say, copy these UVs, we'll go back to our original here, we can go to paste our UVs, and now with this one selected, we can go down here to our texture map, create new from UV map, or UV check, and you can see we now have UVs on this high res object because we now have subdivision history, so we can bake from this low to this high if we wanted to. Now, where errors can come in, uh, that one did a pretty good job because again, it was Z remeshed, it wasn't manually remeshed or anything like that. Um, if we do, let me grab another, let me grab another object here that might be a little bit better. I'm trying to think, let me see, streaming, beep, 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 let's try this one. This is one we were kind of working on um, before, I'm trying to think if I can, let's see how this works. So I'm going to take uh, this sub tool right here, we're going to hold on control shift and we're just going to trim this off just to kind of get um, 
something a little bit more concise to work with here for demonstration purposes. So another thing you can do, instead of dynameshing pieces together, you can also remesh pieces together. So if I take this here, um, I don't have to duplicate off. If you Z remesh, it's gonna replace this object. However, however, if you go down here to your, not Z remesher, it's not a subtool thing. Yeah, it's a subtool thing. It's a um, remesh here. You're gonna see a remesh. It is symmetrical across the X. We'll keep that on. We'll hit remesh. That's gonna give me an, an envelope just around my mesh right here. And it kind of looks like a dynamesh. Um, so now with these two, if I wanted to project this detail back to this one, again, you need both of them showing. Uh, however, you can go into solo mode. As long as the eyeball's turned on, you should be fine. So again, going back into project all, you can project this back and then you can hit uh, control D and then project all and control D and project all. Damn, is this gonna work just fine? I'm trying to get one. Okay, good. In the corners of the eyes, you're gonna see there's artifacting right here. See how it's kind of getting crumbly. Um, also, sometimes you'll have something that'll look like, let's go ahead and undo all the way back here. So here's our, our original envelope here. So it's having a problem uh, projecting in the corners of the eyeballs here. Um, another problem you sometimes might have is it just completely just ignores a certain area. Like if I mask this out and actually it'll probably look like, well, we can just do this. Let's do another project all. And you see in the corner of the eye here, it's having a little bit of a hard time. We can turn on X symmetry. We can hold down shift and smooth these areas out and then hit control D and then do another project all. Um, but again, these things are starting to overlap or not project in very well. Control D, project all. Yeah, it's having a hard time. So one way around this is uh, also, if you're having this problem or if you're having like, let's go into our brush, layer brush here and we'll turn our Z intensity up to 100. Sometimes you'll have things that look like this, where it's just like completely not getting the projection at all. Or sometimes it'll be like in projected inwards and you have to project it out like this. So it's like, ah, oh, why, why is all this happening? Um, there is some fixes for this. One thing you can do is you can do uh, BZP, get the Z project brush, turn off RGB, you don't really need it. You can also crank up Z add to 100. Um, now, if you have X symmetry turned on, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a Z project brush to manually project these back. You can also down here where it was like embedded, you can hold down Alt and project up to the surface. So you can project down to a surface, you can hold down Alt and project up to a surface. And between these, you can kind of um, get a pretty decent result. However, if you go into solo mode here, you're gonna see, oh, what is happening? to our left side here. Um, Z project will pull points straight towards basically your camera view. So if you're gonna Z project this, you don't wanna go from the side here and project this way because it's gonna project that geometry straight back and it's gonna get nasty. So you want to you know, position your camera looking straight at it and then project it back. However, because your brush is pulling from one side, it's gonna do some squirrely stuff on this side. You can do one side, drop down to subject level one, uh, to go out of X symmetry mode, mask half of your object, go down here to your deformation menu, and you can do a smart resim across the X, and then I'm going to hit D to go up in my subdivision level, hit smart resim across the X, hit D to go up in my subdivision level, smart resim, like that. So you can just, you can do one side, have a crappy result on the other side, or you can kind of do the opposite. You can take, um, you can do, you can go out of X symmetry mode, you can go in here and you can use a Z project brush to kind of project these things back. And you, know, you can hold down shift to smooth and then you, I mean, again, just manually go through here and you can hold down alt, hold down alt and then hold down shift to smooth and then don't hold down alt so you can push back like so. And then you can kind of clean these areas up. Now nothing happened on this side, not a big deal. All you gotta do is hold down control. We wanna keep this side here. Now because this is symmetrical is how I'm able to do this. If it's not symmetrical, then you just do both sides. And then, but I'm able to cheat a little bit and go over here to smart resim and then just resim that back over. Um, so using Z project brush to manually go through, grab all your projections, uh, smart resim if you do have a symmetrical mesh because Z project brush can kind of be iffy. Um, that would be how I would do that. Um, now in instances like this where the geometry, if I, you can see I have an eyelid up here and an eyelid down here and I go down to my subject level one and it's like, oh, no wonder it doesn't project right. This geometry is awful. One thing you can do, um, and you know, if 
when you zero mesh, let's, let's even zero mesh something. Let's delete this. Let's take this. Now, if I zero mesh it, it is going to remove um, this geometry. So I do want to duplicate it off. And let's say I want to, you know, make zero mesh geometry. So one thing I would do is I'm going to hit, uh, we can turn off our line here. We can hit control W. Uh, if I want to control that eyelid a little bit better, I can go through here. And again, this is just a pretty rough sculpt. This is just a sketch um, from one of my Discord guys, Bertram. And I took one of his models and we kind of had fun with it. Jeez, months ago now. Um, but what we can do is we can go in through here and we can add a poly group. And then when we Ziri mesh, it'll use this poly group. You can also do, use Ziri mesh guides. It's one of the brushes, B, Z, G, I think. And then um, hold on control alt, we can sharpen that mask up. So now we have uh, a poly group inside here. We can hit control W. So now with this poly group driving, uh, you know what, let's, let's do this. Let's do masking, 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 masking. Um, there it is. We're going to grow that mask and then we're going to hold down control alt tap and then we're going to sharpen that mask. And then instead of hitting um, control W, you're going to see we have little aliased edges. Let's try to go up here to our edge loop, geometry edge loop. Let's do edge loop mask border and that'll give us a little bit of a cleaner cut around there. Uh, you're also going to see, oops, I missed a little piece in there. Not a big deal. Isolate this one, do auto groups, and then we'll just do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld. And we're going to take this little dot inside there. And then this little piece right here, hit control W. And now they're all one poly group here. So now we can use these poly groups to dictate where those um, edge loops are going to go when we zero mesh this. And you can do the same thing for the bottom and all that good stuff too, if you want. Um, but if you zero mesh this here, I'm going to make sure X symmetry is turned on. Zero mesh or depth size down a bit. Keep groups turned on. Uh, smooth groups up at one is fine. And then we can hit zero mesh. And again, you can do groups inside the nostrils. You can do groups down here. You can use your zero mesh or guides to kind of put that geometry right where you want it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, so now we've got new uh, topology here and you're gonna see we have nice edge rings around the eyeballs, which helps a lot. And again, you could do concentric edge rings around this and concentric, you mean, you can do the entire facial topology. We've done that before too. If we go here in our channel and just look for, do a search for topology. Um, facial topology masking and poly groups is in there. Uh, but but, but, but. That'll be good enough. I think, I think that'll work. And then, uh, so now we have this. So now what we can do is when we go through here and we Z project, we can do again, we have both of these showing, you know, there's solo turned off. We can do project all, control D, project all, control D, project all. And you're gonna see how much nicer the corners of the eyes work. However, and again, you can go drop down to subdivision level one if you want to, or you can go through here, you can say work on clone. And then here's our subdivision level one. If we wanna pop these eyeballs out, you can say, uh, turn on poly groups. It is symmetrical. So we can unwrap this symmetrical object with these poly groups and then we can go flatten and then here's our UVs and then our polygroups popped out. So now you have UVs, copy UVs, go back to your original, paste your UVs. Um, there's something else I was going to talk about. Oh, if you wanted to clean this up a little bit, let's go down to southern level one again, delete higher. What we can do is we can clone this object off here. So here's our clone sitting here and hit control W just in case. I'm going to take this one. We're going to append a Z sphere. Go out of solo mode, grab the Z-sphere. Let's go ahead and just get the Z-sphere out of the way. Uh, make sure X symmetry is turned on. We can hit W, E, scale it down. So it's just kind of sitting in the middle of my mesh here. And then we can go down here to uh, adaptive skin. We'll go ahead, density of one, dynamic resolution of zero. And then when we go to topology, we can do select topology, select that clone and then go in here to edit topology, hit Q, turn off transparency. Let's go down to matte cap pearl, darker gray. And then you can go through here. Again, make sure X symmetry is turned on, which it should be. And then we can go through here and we can, oops, let's grab this bottom one here. We have, uh, da, 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 oh, I put it down here at the bottom. Edit topology is turned on, Q, there we go. So now we can go through here. If you want to, you can clean up 
any geometry you want. So if this is bugging you here, you can go through, you can hold down Alt, and you can kind of delete these things out, and then you can go through here, and you can use W to move, and then you can go through here and just like redraw your topology however you want. Uh, once you're done, you can hit A for your adaptive skin. It'll be all your cleaned up geometry however you want it to work. And then you would just go down again to make your adaptive skin. And then now you have brand new geometry sitting here. So you could just go through here and say append my new updated skin. And then we can delete these two, delete, delete. Now you've got a high res, new updated geometry. Use that for your UVs and projecting. Uh, let's go here. Um, okay, question. I don't know if you remember my scan nano mesh brushes we just talked about in ArtStation, but I have a question about that kind of workflow. There's not a problem about creating tileable maps. There's an economic problem about using them on objects and baking them on low poly mesh, which we used as a base mesh for drawing nano mesh on it, like a poly bridge. Um, how we should back the maps when we're using nano mesh on objects. Um, Big, oh, so you're talking about like if you wanted to be, uh, use the tiling result from, like I remember the, you know, you have a bunch of different rocks you could draw into a plane. Um, so anybody else listening, you can go over here to your, let's just do it. Um, there's a plugin you can download from Pixelogic's website called Nano Tile, and you can say, you know what, create a new tile tool. So we're going to create a new one, and what I'm going to do, thank you. We're gonna to go to document here, and we're gonna zoom out a little bit because my resolution my monitor, or the capture area of my monitor isn't great, I should say. And now we can use nano mesh brush here, so we can um, BZM, we can go insert nano mesh, we can do polygroup all if we want to, and then, um, let's see if I remember how to do this. Let's hit M, and is there anything, you know what, we'll just do a helix. We'll go through here and we'll drag on helixes. And then we're going to go down here to our nano mesh, and we're going to go down here to our um, random distribution. And you're going to see, uh, as this one goes off, there's not one that goes on here. I think if we turn off random array, then when we do our random distribution, you're going to see as one kind of goes off, one goes on. So now we're creating a tileable uh, mesh, and you can do this with multiple. In fact, let me go to my YouTube channel. Do nano tile, yeah. Uh, we do nano tile with seeds. Uh, we do it like a bunch of seeds and stuff like this. Uh, so, for example, if we wanted to tile another object on here, we can just hit M, or you can bring in your own object. Doesn't really matter. I'm just grabbing stuff that's easy for me. We'll grab a star, and then uh, as I drag this out, it's going to replace those previous ones. However, if I drag out and hold Shift, it'll add a new indice. So now, if I grab, so we have index one, which is our. Um, let's go back to the white here. If we grab index one, which is our helix, we can go through here and we can start doing um, rotations and stuff like this. Uh, y rotations, Z rotations. And you're going to see it's automatically tiling across this plane. Uh, then we can go to index one, which is our stars. Again, random array is off, so we can do random distribution of our stars here. And then uh, you can use nano tile to go through here and say, okay, you know what? Uh, create seamless maps. I want to do a normal map. Um, BPR auto export. Let's also do a bump map. Why not? So we'll create seamless maps here. And then we're going to go save this. Let's go ahead and just throw that on our desktop. And this will be tiling test. OK, so now we've got those exported. Uh, so if we want to test this, we can grab um, you know what, let's go to document w size new and document yeah that's fine um okay we want to test this on something uh let's just you know let's keep it simple we'll go to a plain 3d these have uh uvs already so what i can do is make a polymesh 3d we can go down here to our bop, bop, beep, boop, beep, surface noise i'm going to grab an alpha uh, tiling test bump and then there's our tiling test here. So we're going to do mix basic noise down to zero and the noise scale. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, alpha scale, because we're using an alpha. So you can see here's our alpha, but it's not very strong. So we can go through here and we can change the strength of our alpha map here. Oh, you know what? Uh, I captured with polyframe on. <sighs> That's what it did. Well, let's see if I can figure this out. So 
let's go over here to subtool. Uh, we have the wireframe. frame. So I'm gonna go back to my document here. Oh, what a pain, I should have done this right. 1024, let's turn proportion off. Let's do 1024, resize. And again, under document, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing. Hit Control N, drag this back out. And with wireframe selected, if I hit F twice, it'll go ahead and reframe my object here. So now, turn off polyframe. And if you want a, um, if you want a smoother result on these helixes, um, <clears throat> we're gonna go to our, back to our tile plane here. We're gonna go to our, wait, which one is it? Um, um, um. I guess it would be our title, My surface. No, not surface noise, and a mesh. Uh, we'll go back to our index zero. We're gonna go into edit mesh. We're gonna hit control D. Uh, oh, if it'll let us, will it not let us? Oh, it will let us. However, under geometry, it looks like smooth modifier was turned off. Uh, control D, let's do control D again, and then we'll go out of edit mesh. There you go, a little bit of a smoother result there. So now, turn off polyframe. Um, go in here, boo, 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 create seamless maps. Is there, and you can also do like um, your albedo, your AO, if you had color, colored these in. Uh, bu, 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 create seamless maps. Okay, and we'll call this one tiling test correct. We'll let it do its thing here. Sorry about that. There we go. So now you can see we have our alphas here. We can go and look at them. I think that'll work a little bit better. So back to document W size new. Let's go grab a plane, edit, make poly mesh 3D, surface noise. Go in here to our alpha, correct bump map. And then now, if we do mix basic noise down to zero, and we pull our strength up, and we do our alpha scale, we can scale it more or less. And then also we can do um, offset a little bit to get rid of any of the deeper areas if we want to. Let's just see if this is working at all. We can try a BPR render. And that'll give you your bump, tiling bump result. Anyway, um, but there's an economic problem about using them on objects, baking them on a low poly mesh. I mean, if you're doing a tiling, if you're doing nano mesh and you're doing tileable maps. Oh, so you're talking about like, okay, so that's how you do tileable maps, everybody. However, what you're asking is not tiling maps, but you just want to put the objects on a low poly mesh and then take that low poly mesh and bake. Um, how you should bake the maps when you're using nanomesh on the objects. Uh, you just have to get a really good low res based on that. You could you can convert your stony bridge to, like we did before with a book, you can dynamesh it all together as an envelope, you can zero mesh it, you can decimate that down to your required poly count, you can manually retopologize it, uh, and then just bake the resulting nanomesh. However, the nanomesh would have to probably be converted to geometry before you exported it. But that's okay. That's just a matter of going into your um, nano mesh here, inventory, and um, one to mesh a bunch of times, or geometry, convert BPR to geo, and that'll convert all of your nano meshes to real geometry so that you can then bake to your low res. Sorry, I missed, missed the point of that. Um, what's the name of the playlist you showed at the beginning? Uh, so, so on my YouTube channel, which is here, and we go to playlists here. So that'll be, these will be all my playlists here. And then on YouTube's channel specifically, if we go over here, let's see, stream, Pavlovich Workshop. These are my, the when I stream for Pixelogic, like today, um, that'll be my videos there. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It seems like there's other stuff I usually send out just for resources, but I think, I think that'll do it. Hey, oh, it looks like I'm getting a little bit behind. Sorry, everybody. Uh, I'm trying to catch you up.
Uh, one question, if you check this image, how I make my cut slices be clean to be able to subdivide into a million polys. Okay, so, so this image here, how can I make my slices to be clean that I'm able to do without subdividing into millions of polygons if you want to just slice through like a complex object? So for example, slice should be able to do that. You know what? ZBrush is getting a little bit heavy with subtools. Let's go ahead and restart. I um, guess we don't need slack in there anymore. Let's do ZBrush. So one thing you can do is you can use the slice curve and then that'll slice directly through your geometry and make it super clean. Um, if you wanted to do a slice trim you could do that too. And that, But essentially what a slice trim does is let's go ahead and load. You know what, let's load up, hit the comma key. We can just grab our demo I'm trying to think. Let's grab the dog here. And you can use the Z project as a Z tool, it doesn't matter. We'll turn on perspective, turn off our floor, and then if I want to, I can hold down control shift. And if you want to do uh, clean cuts through this dog, uh, you can just go through here and you can slice. So if I want to slice out this middle piece here, you got perfectly clean slices. If you want to slice and also cap, uh, you can do it manually or you can use trim curve. And you can slice, and you can slice. And then that, what that essentially that does is it slices, deletes geometry close holes, close holes operation isn't symmetrical, so just do a mirror and weld, that'll make it symmetrical. And then now you have nice clean slices through your object. Um, if you don't wanna delete the other parts of your object, you just wanna have nice clean slices, you can slice, you can also tap Alt, and you can do like a bendy, you can hold down Control Shift, tap Alt twice, and then you can do like a sharp, and then you can go through here manually. I kinda did a weird thing. If you wanna clean up this polygrip, hold down um, Z Modeler brush, hold down Alt, start painting, tap Shift, and then I'll go through there and clean that up. Of course, we don't have um, X turned on, so it didn't do it on both sides. Uh, so now we have two cleaner versions of this. So what we can do is we can isolate this one. We can go ahead and split this off. Let's go ahead and kill that. Uh, and then just like the manual method for this would be geometry modified topology, close holes, and then you can do a mirror and weld. Or if you're so inclined, you can go in your Z modeler brush, you can do like close convex hole and you can close it like this, or you can do close concave hole like this. And then again, just do another mirror and weld. And then we'll go alt tap this one. We can again split this one off, geometry modified topology. You can um, close these holes however you'd like. Um, you may run into an example of, if we go down here to our display properties, we turn on double. If we close holes on this one in particular, you're going to see it closes, but then it kind of does a swoop in. There's a couple ways to mitigate that. You can hover over this edge here and you can do a bridge edges and you can say, okay, I'm going to bridge here, I'm going to bridge here. And that just tells ZBrush a little bit more information. So now when I go through here and I close holes, it's going to close that top one and close that bottom one. It gives me a little bit better result. Um, another one is you can do close holes and then Oh, let's see if I remember how to do this. There's a, a Chi Vang did this. Um, I don't do it very often, so I don't really remember. Um, if we go hold down control shift. Yeah, hit W, control tap this one to mask it. Hold down control and pull out, no. Oh, uh, what is it? Think, think, think. Okay, so you go through, you slice, you close, and then you want to pull it sideways. Oh, I don't remember what it is. Google Chi Vang ZBrush Summit, and you'll see him do a uh, do a version of this that'll actually take care of that. I wish I could remember how to do it. Let me see, Marin Weld. We don't have hex turned on. I should be able to figure this out. W, control, tap this one, because we want to essentially... Oh, that might be it. Let's do this. So we're going to take those over to the side. And then now if I do a mirror and weld here, oh, turn off local. No, no, LSIM, no. Where's our floor at? Right down the middle. Let's do a mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. Okay, that was it. So essentially what we're doing, I think, is uh, we're taking these ends here. So I'm going to mask this middle part out, invert that, ma or mask that middle part out, and then we're going to hold down control and drag out, although it is leaving garbage behind. Let me see if I can do a better job. I'm going to grab this, these ends here, mask it, invert that mask, hit W, hold down control, and drag out a drag just over. So essentially what I'm doing is dragging this over enough so when I do a mirror and weld, 
um, when I do a mirror and weld this time, it mirror and welds from the uh, negative x to the positive x. So what I'm going to do is do a quick geometry deformation mirror and then mirror and weld. And now we have nice geometry right down the middle. If you want to regroup these, actually, let's do this. Hold down Control Shift, do Control Shift X to expand, hit Control W. That'll make it a new polygroup on the back. And then you can do your mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. Thank you, Chi Vang, for that. And uh, sorry, it took me a minute to remember how to do that. but. Cool. Thanks, um, D. Van Gore, for showing up. Glad the videos are helping. Germany's awesome, too. So I, I managed to make it out to Germany a couple years ago. And, um, yeah, I love traveling. I wish I could just do that for a living. <laughs> um, I, got one, I was wanting to take your CGMA course. I was wondering if what, it, if what is available on their site is the same as their course on Gumroad. Could you let me know if there's any difference? Um, there is, yeah, it's the same video series, so we go through and we do scheduled classes for, you know, it's a six-week course, so watch uh, part zero, or unit one, on YouTube for free, and then units two through seven are just the videos that we watch. However, um, there's always supplementary stuff, and number, you get to ask questions, you get to interact with the other students, so... You know, if you just want to watch the videos, I would say the video series, you can just um, grab the videos, that's fine. Uh, but we, we talk about a bunch of different stuff too, and towards the end, I give you resources, uh, my online resources, uh, that are available on my YouTube channel too, but uh, we get a little bit more into essentially what you do when you go through the class is you kind of pick something to work on and then I'll walk you through troubleshooting and problem solving, uh, and you can do something new every week if you wanted to, I'm not real real stickler on that. Uh, essentially pick something to work on as you're going through the videos and then I'll help you troubleshoot your way through those coming up with elegant solutions to kind of make your models or achieve uh, the result that you want in the most elegant way possible or I should say uh, a little bit more elegantly than maybe you would find out yourself if you're kind of new to ZBrush. I can kind of guide you a little bit better than just you watching the videos and going okay this is how I do everything okay now I want to make a weapon or a vehicle or a tree or whatever uh, or a little scene, uh, how do I do that? Because, you know, teaching you technique is one thing, but stringing those techniques together to come up with an elegant solution for creation, um, or a, um, I don't know, it's necessarily elegant, it would be an efficient way to do it. Uh, also, one thing I forgot to mention here, sometimes you have these little slivers down here. If you go into Geometry, Modified Topology, Weld Points, you can weld some of these points together. So we're going to crank that weld distance up, and you can see... Whoosh, you go ahead and weld those little slivers together. That'll kind of help you. And then if you crank the weld distance up too high, it'll start grabbing too much stuff. Um, but but it, yeah, like this one here, maybe you don't want, but this one here you do. So just try to find that weld distance that'll grab that one and not that one. And then that'll be a lot cleaner of a mesh. And then now this one here, you, we have X turned on. You can go ahead and say, zero, again, zero mesh or keep groups, uh, target polygon count. Let's just do same, depth size down to zero. And you can zero mesh this result and get you a nice game res fairly quickly. Um, let's see, hey, Michael, I'd love to hear some of your recommendation. And if I miss anybody's comments, I apologize. I'm just kind of, kind of, uh, winging it again. Uh, I'd love to hear some of your recommendations for practice for attaching arms and legs to a body. Work on anatomy, study each part separately without resorting to, without resorting to Dynamesh. Without resorting to Dynamesh, you'd probably have to manually... Hmm. You could live Boolean? Uh, I demonstrated mesh fusion in the previous stream, but that was not really for models for which each part is almost completed. Um... Mesh fusion, okay. Okay, I got you. So so for anybody who doesn't know, mesh fusion is a really cool one. So if we take this uh, end piece here, we do control shift S to shrink, and then we hit control W, we have a polygroup here, right? So what we can do is we can go to, um, this is one of my favorites I like to do. Let's go ahead and grab like a poly mesh 3D here. Let's go to BI brush insert live Boolean, hit M. Let's go ahead, or, um, we can hit W, and then just grab this one so we can steal this geometry. Hold down control shift. And we're just gonna grab this little end piece here. We're gonna go ahead and delete hidden. Uh, snap to the front here, hit B. Oops, B, create insert mesh new. So we got this one here, we'll go back to our dog. And then anywhere we have a polygroup here, when we go to drag this out, it will um, control drag, control drag again. It'll automatically 
mesh fusion. It'll reconfigure this. So if we go through here, let's go ahead and just do a crease poly group. We'll go ahead and turn on dynamic, smooth subdiv, let's crease level two, smooth subdiv of three. You can see it'll automatically just make a beautiful um, attachment point in here. In fact, if we go to the back here, let's do, we got that. Let's take this end one here. And the reason I'm bringing it in an edge loop, we don't have to do that. We can do, um, what can we do? Let's go through here. Let's do an insert single edge loop. I'm going to, I'm just like having control loops on the, on these edges here. So I can go through here, do control shift S to shrink, control W. And then uh, again, we can do a mesh fusion, but this time let's go ahead and grab our insert mesh brush. We had hold down alt, when you drag it out, that'll invert it. Control drag, control drag again. And again, it'll just go ahead and resolve uh, that geometry. It'll work better in some areas than the other. This is kind of an organic shape here. Um, but again, then again, we do crease poly group and then D for dynamic. And then, you know, there's the uh, ext extroverted. Uh, here's inverted. And then here's the other way. Um, so we can do that. And this also is just, it does free you up here. If you do want to go through here, it's like, you know what, let's do, let's put a bevel there. So we'll go to um, insert single edge loop, hold down alt. We'll get rid of this one here. And then we can say, let's see if we can like bevel this here. So we can do a big fat bevel on here. And it uh, looks like this one had a little bit of a problem. I'm going to go, you know what, let's see if we can do a, there we go, mirror and weld. Yeah, when I did mesh fusion, it's not a symmetrical um, result, so mirror and weld here, and then we can just, we can clean this up pretty easily, we can just go in here to collapse edge, and we'll collapse this down, and then we'll go to um, remove brush here, and we'll say you here, and then you guys look fine, that's fine, and then um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, so we're doing this, and we're putting a big fat bevel over here, so we can now we can do a crease by poly group, and then D and that gives us a nice bevel over here. If you wanted to round this bevel out, this is where I would go through here and maybe do a um, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And then as you pull on here, you can kind of round out that result here. Let's go ahead and do uncrease all, hit control W. And then if we want to say like, oh, I want to keep some of these edges uh, hard, what we can do is do a, um, I like to see the visual representation of that. So under your poly group menu, you can do group by normals and let's crank that max down here a little bit. There we go. And then we can say, you know what? All of these should be one poly group here. That'll be fine. And now we can do a, um, actually let's do this one, control shift X to expand. And then we'll get rid of these ones here. Oof. There you go. Control W, so that'll keep that nice and round. And then we could do another crease poly group and then dynamic. And that'll keep that one rounded. And then those ones hard. So kind of up to you. Uh, oh yeah, so that was Mesh Fusion. Now, um, if you had an anatomy model, like if you hit uh, comma key, tool, let's go ahead and grab Ryan King's lines model here. And go out of solo mode here. So we have an anatomy model and we want to, um, we don't want to dynamesh this together. One thing you can do is you have all these subtools showing. Um, you can go down here to your Boolean. And uh, so turn on live Boolean. And since these are all additive, it's just going to Boolean these all together. So you can turn on live Boolean. We don't have dynamic subdivisions on, so we can say make Boolean mesh. And that'll go through and make this all one unified mesh but it boolean them together. So now, um, instead of dynameshing these things, it went through and boolean them together. So much cleaner result, you don't have to resort to dynamesh. So that could be another option for you. Oh yeah, thanks Bertram. I need to get back on the um, Discord. I'm I, Again, my, my schedule's been crappy and I'm not, Unfortunately, I'm not doing stuff where I'm like, hey, wait till you see what I've been working on. It's not that kind of thing, <laughs> unfortunately. But soon, hopefully, once these things are self-sustaining, we can, um, I'll be I'll be on a little bit more. Uh, I have a project primitive issue with complex shape and cavity and blending shape. Some good tips to use the best tool on complex and dense meshes or to only value for basic stuff. For me personally, project primitive, like you said, is more of a base more of a uh, large read. It's more of a just a primary forms read. Um, 
when you start getting into like primary and secondary forms, what I would do is I would use, um, and anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, um, you can go to my YouTube channel here and in ZBrush 2018, what's new? If you go in here, uh, if you scroll down, there's a uh, project primitives, base functionality, different types of shapes and all that hard surface and vector displacement, all that good stuff you can use uh, that for. I'll go ahead and link you guys to that. Um, but you're right, it is if you click on any of these. I, I guess we can just drag this undo slash. I guess we can just do it um, just using project primitive to kind of go through and make these types of shapes. But I probably this is the extent of how complicated I would get with it uh, is this stuff right here primary forms, maybe a little bit of secondary forms, but really what I would do is get my primary forms in and then I would use other techniques like life boolean to go through and do my secondary shapes personally. Um, but you know, your mileage may vary. I'm not, I'm certainly not a project primitive expert. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, well, I already deleted it. Man, I'm, I am behind. I apologize. Oh, do I have tips for stylized hair? You bet I do. Um, so a couple different places for that. Uh, let's go to my YouTube channel here. And if you just type in hair, I'm sure you're going to get a bunch. Yeah, so there's Dragon Ball Z hair creation, hair card creation techniques. Now, the one I was hoping to find, yeah, is over here under like ZBrush imposter hair card creation techniques. Um, so any of these will work. However, specifically, it's under controlling curves under my playlist menu here, ZBrush Summit 2018 demos. If you scroll all the way down here to where we start getting into... ZBrush curves helper plugin, wire bundles, rig posing. There's some hair stuff down in here, I believe. Um, but yeah, that that hair link should work just fine. And that hair, those hair techniques were, and that's not stylized hair. But if you're wondering, um, oh, you know what? Let's do demo videos. Did I? Oh, you know, I think I put it at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, so this one here, this is a little cinematic. We did a certain affinity for the ZBrush Summit. So this hair right here was used, created using by Tony Reynolds um, doing all ZBrush. Let me see if I can get that close up of her face here where she was doing her. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Here, here, yeah. So all this hair was done using ZBrush curves, just like I show in the in that video. Of course, not stylized, but really the same result would be, you know, doing the curves, and then instead of converting it to hair cards, just keep it curves, and you go thick to thin, and just use that to do your stylized hair. Uh, Hannibal, hey. Uh, I'm sculpting a statue of a character who has a beard. I was told to use a separate tool for the beard, but it tends to make the beard look like Santa Claus. Is there a better method to sculpt the fine hairs of the beard where it starts? Or do I need to learn fiber mesh for a um, status coat and no more instant Santa? Um, the only, yeah, the, so if we go through here, there was, um, that's a red. So it, depend, it kind of depends on I'm trying to find a uh, like an example of like sculpted hair and what you can what you can do and depending on how uh, stylized you want to keep it, these could all be individual um, like hair cards or um, the curves that you draw out and uh, you can control and you can twist again. It's all in that. Um, this ZBrush Summit thing here into controlling curves down through here. Like, uh, yeah, this twisted wire bundle creation techniques is be essentially how I would create these kind of twisting helixes. Um, now, once you do all that and say it's a beard, what you can do is you can, you know, do this and it's all separate pieces. But if you wanted to feather it in, you could do, you could Dynamesh, you could merge visible on your whole, all your beard pieces, um, Dynamesh it, uh, 
and then go through and you can like mask the area where it kind of connects to the face, deflate the rest of it, and then you can use the uh, unmasked area to kind of feather in sculpting. You know, if you are going to 3D print it out, you can you can always just, you know, keep the beard separate so that it's easier to work with, but then at the very end, um, or like you said, you can mask where those two things come together. I guess I can stop rubbing my face and we can actually just do it. Uh, let's go ahead and say delete. And we can say delete all. And we can say, um, yeah, we'll go back to, we'll have a little bit of fun with this guy. We'll load Bertram's um, uh, streaming. Oh, we got Mario World stuff. Let's see what's in here. Uh, oh, we didn't we didn't really do a lot with that. Um, so uh, we have this here. So if we wanted to put a beard on him, uh, and I wanted to use like the curves, uh, we could certainly do that. However, um, you could just drag on a beard. You can create a beard on this. And then what we can do is we can do a, um, I guess let's create a beard here. This really quickly, we're going to pretend like we did a really nice stylized beard. Oh, you know what I can use? Uh, here we go. Now I'm thinking. Streaming, we were doing, uh, what was it? Bam. Let's call this a beard. So we're going to do a merge visible here. I'm going to grab this face here, control shift. We're going to say delete hidden. And now what I can do is go back to our character here, go to append merged head. So here's, okay. Now that might be accidentally the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. All right. I'm going to go ahead and screen cap this one because I think this is going to be a real winner. Man, that is good stuff. So we have this here. Uh, now I can make this a beard. I can just hit W and we can just rotate this around and we can scale this in. And there we go. So now we have a stylized beard. Yay. So he's old man bob -omb. Now, if we wanted to feather in where this transition happens, what you can do is you can, we'll say, let's go ahead and take this sphere right here and we're going to duplicate it off. I'm going to hold down shift, shoot it down to the bottom here. And let's go ahead and I'm, it's dynamics on. So if I turn dynamic off, you're going to see it's actually very low res. I'm going to apply those subdivisions here because what we're going to do is you can dynamesh these things together and sculpt so it kind of feathers in. Uh, but you, like you were saying, fiber mesh might be a good result or a good um, reason to kind of go through here and say, if we mask all this stuff here, and this is going to be where our fiber mesh goes. <clears throat> and we're doing it on this duplicate here. So we're going to go down here and we're going to say, um, where it is? <laughs> fiber mesh uh, preview. So there's our fiber meshes. Now, again, we're going from stylized to hyper, hyper real fur, which is kind of weird looking. But what we can do is we can go into our modifiers here and we're going to drag our max fibers down and we're going to crank our coverage up. So we're getting nice, like thicker versions of this. Um, if we want to, we can also go down here if we kind of don't want to see our masking. We'll say masking, turn off view mask. So now we have uh, these fibers going out, but they are still kind of uh, thin. However, if you hit BPR, you're going to see they're going to thicken up and round out that there. But if you're going to turn this into geometry, what we're going to do is under our BPR settings, you're going to see it's subdividing it twice and then giving it four sides. You can also go to our segments here. You can crank up the number of segments. That'll just give it more to kind of go down. So if you want to update that, uh, but then when we make our profile, anything other than one, like, so if you want to make it four, um, it just says, Hey, before you do this, understand that if you hit BPR, it'll do this for you. It'll be a little bit faster to interact with. I'm going to say, you know what, that's fine. I want to actually see, uh, those things here. So what we can do is, and also let's take this base and we'll do white and we'll go tip and we'll do white. There we go. So now we just have like interactive. So now we can go there and say, okay, the max fibers is too much and we want to go thick to thinner. So down here we can do, let's do scale tip and we'll keep dragging this down. So it just kind of goes to a thinner point like this. Um, and again, this is just going to be a massage type thing. So you're going to go through here and do your settings to make it so that it's 
you know, your max fibers down a little bit maybe, or maybe up, or however many max fibers you think you need. Um, if you're happy with this result, you can go through here and you can do accept, and now you have fibers you can play with. So now these fibers are sitting here, and you don't need your original poly mesh. This was just placeholder, so we're gonna go ahead and delete that. So now with your fibers here, you can go to BG brush groom, and we'll say groom hair toss. And you can go through here and you can kind of groom these fibers out here, or you know what, in this case, I might just be able to go in here and just with W and just kind of use the move brush here to kind of match this. And also you can hit um, D for dynamic. And let's go ahead and do a uh, crease here just to kind of creep those. So we're gonna go ahead and do a crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. There we go. So that kind of matches a little bit closer with this one, which will do a crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, or a crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. There we go. So if you can, you can kind of feather this in. Now when we're hitting, I'll tap this one. When we're using move, you're gonna see it's going to mask the roots. You can go in here to auto masking and you can auto, uh, turn off auto mask fiber mesh and then you can go grab those roots so you can pull them down and then you can turn that back on. That just keeps your roots masked when you're using fiber mesh. So you can kind of use that maybe to kind of feather the transition between, because if we turn this off, you're gonna see, ooh, that's a harsh transition but then you can kind of feather that transition and still keep it kind of stylized. Maybe. Uh, could I also use Decimation Master to help me project all the detail to a retopology mesh? If you've retopologized and you want to um, project all, you could use Decimation Master to give you a game res for sure, and then just subdivide that. Um, I mean, it'll be triangulated, so it's not gonna be super hot but if you're just doing um, anything that doesn't animate, absolutely. Cool, cool. Uh, I'm trying to keep up. Let me see. Cool. Let me see if this comes up with. Let me see what this one's all about here. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and yeah, part of that, yeah, curve brushes all day long. Um, I'm just going to that 80 level tutorial. Yeah, yeah, same thing we've been talking about. Cool. Uh, where And you know, you can also brute force this. You can also take like, uh, if you wanted to just dynamesh the sphere and then just take snake hook or um, you know, let me see if we do like a snake hook with maybe uh, this alpha, and then we say apply and then dynamesh. You can kind of go through here and you just kind of pull out maybe, you know, or you can even try maybe if it'll let us, will it let us do? Yeah, I don't know. There might be other ways to kind of brute force that out. Uh, Pavlovich YouTube, yeah, let me, I, can, uh, I can message you that one here. So uh, for the intro to, or the uh, ZBrush Radiation part one, this is kind of an intro to ZBrush part one if you want to, it walks you all the way through like, hey, light box, what is it? And canvases and sculpting and all that good stuff. I'll just link you directly to that. And um, like uh, Cap says, mask and move out while you extrude. Um, that would be another thing to kind of give you geometry back there. Hey Barry, thanks for showing up. Sorry I'm so behind on the comments here. <laughs> Dr. Depresso. Cool. Um, oh yeah, uh, let me see. Um, yeah, 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 let me see. Gumroad. Pavlovich. So if you want, if you do want this custom menu, you can make your own. Um, that link I just barely sent out to you will walk you through how to make your own. If you do want this one in particular, you can do, I'll show you where that is. Boy, Gumroad is, is it just on me? It's just slow. It's just slow. You can go to my cube brush plate, page, page, 
and you can go all the way down here to Intro to ZBrush Files, and my uh, ZBrush 2018 startup men, uh, folder will be in here. There's instructions on how to install it, as well as on my Gumroad page, same thing. Oh, what happened here? Hmm. I need to go through here and move these things around a little bit, looks like. Scroll all the way down-ish to the bottom, Intro to ZBrush Files, and if you click click on there, I'm in edit mode. Uh, click on the Intro to ZBrush Files, and uh, you can download my Uh, can I convert fiber, fiber mesh into XGen and Maya? You can, kind of, I think. I haven't actually done it, but when you're doing fiber mesh, do I still have a fiber mesh? Yeah. So under the fiber mesh options here, there is an export curve. You can export your curves as uh, OBJ files, ASCII, LightWave, Modo, fiber mesh guides, raw 32 bit floating points file. So there might be some ob um, curve options in here that you can use to maybe convert. Oh, cool. Thanks for the, the word of mouth, Mimorti. Cool. All righty. Well, I'm all caught up, and I feel good today because, like I said, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you mix and match little guys here. I almost want to do... Let's do this one. Let's do... Could have sworn... Here... So when you're scaling stuff down, if you're ever, well, I mean, I guess in this case, it's not a huge deal, but, oh, you know what? I think there's one that actually looks like this, where it's like a Mozart uh, head here. But uh, let's go ahead and again, we're, we're turning on dynamic. So that's shift D is to turn it, D to turn it on, and then shift D to turn it off. I always, always, always suggest um, doing dynamic subdivisions as opposed to uh, real subdivisions, in fact. The only time I ever do real subdivisions, even this guy here, I think, you know what, I might, I might have actually subdivided him, but it keeps you a lot looser, it allows you to do um, a lot more work, especially, okay, so for the hard surface tips, I, mu I missed that one, or I didn't follow up on it, I should say. Um, yeah, I got a ton of hard surface stuff we talk about, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything in particular, kind of depends on what you want to make, hard surface is kind of broad, it's like organic hard surface armor, I would approach differently from like, modeling, uh, you know, this thing, modeling a pencil sharpener versus modeling a mug versus, you know, it kind of, it's kind of a just order of operations and primary and secondary forms and stuff. Uh, how can I change my matte cap to a silhouette view? So if I wanted to view a silhouette of this guy, um, one easier, easier way to do that would just go in here to flat color and then you can change that to black. Uh, oh, black's probably not gonna work. You can do white, and then now you've got a silhouette of him. Um, but also, and then if you hit BPR, it'll go ahead and give you a nicer silhouette render of this guy in particular. However, if you want to, you can go to any material. So we can say, uh, we can go back to Matcap Gray, make it a black color. And then if we want to, we can take, change our document uh, background color. So go to document, back, you can just drag to a slight, I don't want to blow your guys' eyeballs out, but now you can get, um, do like silhouette studies like this. And then we'll go ahead and drop this down just a bit. Ludwig, yes. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Boy, that works just great. All right. Um, what else? What else? Uh, well, I guess we can... We can kind of do some hard surface stuff here. So let's say we wanted to, um, actually let's go back to, because this guy, uh, as simple as he is, is mostly just hard surface. So if we go back here, and we go back to Mario, blah, blah. so this guy, for example, this guy here, um, he is everything on him, I believe, if I do a quick uh, subtool, merge visible. So here he is all merged, and you're gonna see uh, if I go into polyframe mode here, and in fact, let's turn off his polypaint here, and let's go back to skin shader. You're going to see everything on here is just super Z modeler. Now, if you go back, I don't remember what video I actually did this stuff on, but you're going to see like complex shapes like this foot are much different than I would create like this shape here, but you can create this shape here in any number of ways. There's like, so many different ways to do hard surface stuff. So one thing I would say for ZBrush in particular is, um, is, um, 
you get get used to Z Modeler. It's a powerful tool. Um, it just takes a little bit of muscle memory to kind of go through here and like, okay, again, Z Modeler is BZM. So you can go through here, we can turn on X symmetry. And if I wanted to do anything, I can isolate this one here, do Control Shift A, we can go ahead and say split this off. So that's going to be split. And that's under your subtool split menu. Now for this top part here, you see how it kind of bulbs out. If we wanted to make that flat, we can isolate this top part, invert it, delete hidden, go back through here, and then we hover over this edge, and we can say close, convex hole, and you just cap that, hit control W. There we go. Um, and then of course, if you wanted to insert this, or inset this, you can go inset polygroup all, inset region, and you can inset this here, you can inset it again, you can go in here to Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift, and you can pull this down, or you can just Q mesh it down, depends on what you're going for here. Um, and then this goes back into, if you wanted to like insert single edge loop, hold down alt, you can get rid of that, and that'll give you a nice bevel, or you can go back in here, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and you can just pull through, and you can make it rounded, like so or you can go through here and pull it the other way if you wanted to. But then you'd probably want to put a control loop in there if you wanted to do that. Um, you could, you can go through here, insert single edge loop, just add a little control loop there. You can even add a control loop here. And then in here, you can say, let's say poly group, poly loop. You can tap alt to update that. And then you can just Q mesh all this back or you can Q mesh all this out. Or you can go through here and like I said, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. You can just pull this backwards or you can pull it forwards just depending on what you want to arrive at. And that'll kind of just be how you model. And there, of course, there's a million different ways to use the modeler for all sorts of your modeling needs. In fact, um, I think I've got in that one, if you scroll down, I think there's a really long one on Z model, like 25 minutes or some such gizmo base. Yeah, Z modeler basics. So in this playlist right here, go to video 32, and then I'll walk you through the basics of Z model are in 23 minutes. Um, good to do. Can I change the Matt Capsule Silo view? Can I do this with a shortcut? Changing your Matt Capsule with a shortcut, sure. I mean, if you want it, so down here at the bottom of my screen, you can see I can very quickly switch through different um, things. You can maybe possibly make a macro. You can make a new macro and record you applying and changing your document background. It might get a little bit, again, I haven't done this, so it may not work great, uh, but just really quickly, you can just drop custom materials on here. You can drop materials into your um, custom menu if you want to. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, there is a quick, yeah, I'm almost, I'm positive you can do a macro that'll do that, but I'm just not sure how to set that up. I'm not real, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not good at Z scripting. Huh. Gotta create something like a cyborg robot. Actually, if you go, um, let me let me link you here. Stream. I think just recently, I want to say maybe episode 50. Um, actually, this is on my channel too. We actually do. Uh, we take Birdie's um, kind of demon here and we do go talk about how to make a cyborg ish creature like how to flesh out the pieces and um and i mean we can talk about it a little bit and uh, that just kind of goes like some fan art that i had it was um talking about cyborg so i can link you guys here if you want to check these out personally but this is what we're talking about in particular Like this here. So, you know, you've got metal, little metal areas. And this is a very, very old model, but this would be how I would start it anyways. This is just a sketch. This is like a 3D concept sketch, essentially, where you have the demon part, and then you have like the little cyborg parts, and you got the wire sticking out, and all the little, little gross things poking out of him, and all that stuff. So, like up here under his chin, he's got his jaw soldered, and he's got some rubber gaskets, and all this little weird stuff going on in him. Um, all it really be is making your model and then going through and just concept sculpting this part out. You don't have to concept sculpt it out, but for me, it's just a little bit easier. So for me personally, if you want to see me kind of doing that, um, if you go to my playlists, load more, these are pretty old. Uh, there's the ZBrush mech helmet concept sculpt and also concept sketching. So if we go here, 
you can see me, if anybody's familiar with the GDC female, um, you can go through here and you can kind of see the making of that. You know, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this lady. I mean, she's uh, she's the game res that I used on, that I put up on um, Swap. And also that helmet, I'm sure everybody's, I'm not sure everybody's seen it, but probably you've seen this helmet around. This is really, really old, uh, but you've probably seen this helmet around a couple different places. Um, Quixel used it and uh, Substance used it and Houdini's used it a couple times. Um, but yeah, this, this helmet here, again, this is very, very old techniques, but uh, it still works. You know, so there's there's those hard surface techniques you can do. You can actually listen to me talk about this stuff as I go through in concept sculpt. Now, when you're concept sculpting, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and and again, that's all just down in my um, my YouTube playlist here under load more mesh helmet concept sculpting and concept sketching. Again, these are really old, but it's still the same idea of just going through here and just using clay brush, standard brush. Damien Standard, H Polish, Trim Dynamic, inserting cylinders and stuff just to kind of get your basic shapes. And then you would end up with a result that would be like this. And then you could make the decision to, do I just bake it out and call it, hey, it's a concept sketch. It's just a little bit of fan art, no big deal. It takes a couple hours to do. Or do you go through here and do you rebuild all this stuff? Do you use Z Modeler? Do you go through and make it really nice and sub D modeled? Because you're gonna render it in Keyshot or do like a product render of it. It's kind of up to you. But cool, awesome. Uh, hopefully, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're in module three, you're you're making some pretty good progress. I know, you know, when you're going through the 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 full seven core series, again, you're just you're kind of learning a lot of techniques. So it's a lot to take in, and you go all the way through it. And then you'll make stuff, and the first thing you make is going to take a long time. It's going to be a pain. Uh, it's going to be a lot of learning. But then the second time you make something, the third time, the fifth time, the hundredth time that you make something, um, it'll just be like it'll start clicking, and then you'll know how to problem solve certain things. Uh, I'm not an expert at any in one thing in particular, but it does get easier. Possible to create vegetation and plants for games using fiber mesh? Absolutely. So let's take this little top piece here, and then we'll go ahead and mask it. And we will say fiber mesh. And in this fiber mesh here, now it kind of depends on like vegetation. Yeah, vegetation and plants for games. What you would have to do is uh, use fiber mesh as like creating hair cards. You would use fiber mesh to create plant cards. And then you'd use texture. So in this case, um, well, I was going to say you could do just straight up like, oh, here's vegetation in here. So you can go to click the light box button. And then if you wanted to do, I guess, tall weeds. Here, so you can do some tall weeds growing out of the top of that thing, and then we hit BPR. You'll see. Um, actually, let's turn off polyframe. That would help. Um, that'll show you the tall weeds. Uh, however, if you wanted these tall weeds to each be uh, game res, like a like a texture of a like a mega scan texture of a plant or something on a card, that's where you would have to go through and change your. Uh, segments, keep your segments under control probably, your profile set to one, uh, and then you would go through here with your coverage and you would make those cards as thick or as thin as you would need to. Let's just crank our max fibers down, we don't need that many. So this is going to be this, we're going to change our coverage here, and essentially what you're doing is just creating plant cards. And these, all the fiber mesh stuff goes root to tip, it's UV'd, so if you put a texture on here, like say a star, um, it will assign you got a star that's going from root to tip in fact you can also put in uh, using this method you can put in this isn't towards your question but you can also do like feathers so you can make a feather 3d feather model and it'll put the model along here using micro mesh but um, if you want to know more on that you can just go in here to let's see if we have that if I have that I, we've done it in a live stream I don't know if I've touched on it fishnet nano mesh yeah, I guess not. It's in the it's in the series. But let me change our coverage here. Let's crank this coverage up in this width profile. I'm going to just reset it so it just goes um, flat, and we're just going to crank max it out just so you can see a little bit better. So now these are like plant cards, and if you put a plant down root to tip, which 
I don't have a really good plant material, but you can also, anything that's black will be alpha. You can do anti-aliased alpha if you want to. And even if I render this, you'll see that it takes transparency into consideration. Let's turn off polyframe here. Oh, and under our BPR settings, we need to say, crank our sides down to two, subdivide down to zero. So it doesn't try to fatten it up any, there you go. So now it's just like cards root to tip with a plant material in it. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's see. Okay, <laughs> good point. Um, with the uh, V key, you can just, it's gonna switch your primary and secondary color. So if we want, did wanna do a silhouette of this, uh, let's go ahead and we can turn off fiber mesh here. And we'll go back to our one here. So uh, in order for this to work, so if I do V now, I have my poly paint on, so it's not gonna see anything. You hold down shift and then turn off all these little uh, colorized little paintbrush there. So now it's not colorized. So now when we hit V, we'll switch. Uh, you'll see like, oh, we got a little bit of a, a sheen on there. You can, matcap gray uh, works fine, but if you do have like a skin shader for it that does have a little bit too much, uh, you can always go into your material if you want to, if you don't mind. And then you can do modifiers. You can just take that specular down to zero. And then you can hit V again, and then you're back to where you started, like so. But I like the specular up on that one. Cool. Yeah, quick sketch on top of a... Uh, uh, anything in ZBrush is really cool. It'll allow you, uh, especially if you're doing stuff like, if we go into, let's go to Append, Z-Sphere, Transparency, um, where'd it go? There it is. So we've got this one here. Let's go to Matcap Gray and back up to White. So if you're not familiar, with anybody here not familiar with Z-Sketching, I will go out of Transparency Mode, we'll go into Edit Sketch. So this puts us in Z-Sketch Mode and you can use Z-Sketching to kind of draw on any surface. So if you wanted to do like roots, or anything, or like, and you can go thick to thin. Um, you can use this to very, very quickly just Z sketch right on the surface of any object here. So it's really cool for that type of stuff in particular. Any kind of weird, creepy stuff. And then once you have this, if you go through here and you do, um, so with a sketch, it's automatically, if you hit A and you have edit sketch selected, it's gonna turn it into a unified skin, which is probably fine. Over here, it's a unified skin preview. You can say make unified skin. And then again, we just append this here. If you don't need the Z sphere anymore, you can delete it. So now we have this skin just sitting on top of here. And now you're fully free to go through here. And uh, let's change this to smooth stronger. And you can go through here and you can like smooth these things out. Or you can even do a, uh, let's say control W, make it all one poly group. And then we'll go in here to your polish by features. And we can just polish this up or we can do polish open circle and really kind of polish these things out. And you can hold down shift again and you can just kind of smooth these things here if you want to. And then you can sculpt on top of this if you'd like. Uh, can I contact you on Instagram about some of my problems in my model? You can give it a shot. Um, I'm absolutely terrible. I, I try to go through and check everything at least once a week and I've failed at that spectacularly. Uh, but yeah. And yeah, post on my Discord and I'll try to Yay, awesome. Uh, for ornamental details on ZBrush like armor, you use the UV with alpha. You can, um, eh, there's a couple of different ways to do that. If you wanna see me just kind of going through doing, uh, again, this is just a video I found of some really old stuff, uh, but there's a lot of different techniques on doing this uh, lion helmet block out. So this is kind of sculpted in, and then all this detail here was done a certain way with curved brushes. Uh, this was done with like masking and extracting and zero meshing. Uh, this relief lion here was done with sculpting. Uh, I tried to do it with alpha, it didn't kind of work that well. This is all Z modeler here. So yeah, it kind of depends on what kind of detailing you want to do. Uh, but I can, I can link you to that. Let's see here. Ornate lion helmet, it's called. Hey, BN, thanks for showing up. Yeah, so uh, for example, if we wanted to ornament this guy out, one fun thing to do is we can go in here to our, let's go grab a Zero Sphere 3D, edit mode, let's hit W, we'll go ahead and, oops, make poly mesh 3D. Shrink this down here, scale it out a little bit maybe. And we'll go ahead and say X symmetry turned on, and we'll go ahead and make this into a 
thing. And actually, you know what? I'm going to do scale this down. So when I go through here, I'm actually going to DynaMesh this here. And then we have X turned on, so we can go through here and we can use Damien Standard. And go through here and we can kind of sculpt our fancy whatever, right? Uh, but if I want to make a flower out of this, one thing I can do is I can go in here to Array Mesh. And I'm going to say, let's turn on Array Mesh. And I'm going to say repeat of, let's say, a, mm, let's say eight. And then we're going to do um, rotate in the Y amount, 360. And then I can set the pivot here. Uh, to set the pivot a little bit easier, I'm going to go into transpose here, hit W, and then hit Y, which is just turning this thing on and off. So now we can go here and we can set where our uh, pivot's going to go automatically. So we can kind of create a flower really quickly on the fly. We can hit Q to go back into draw mode or turn transpose mode off. So now we can go through here with our move brush and we're just going to move one of these things. And you can uh, go through here and you can kind of just go through and just kind of make this whatever kind of flower you'd like. So you go through here and you're using the array mesh functionality to kind of do some really quick ornamentation. If you're happy with this, uh, you can go here to array mesh make mesh or, um, you know, if you are did have a very complex one, you can always go anytime, geometry, um, convert VPR to geo, and that'll go ahead and convert that all to one piece of geometry here. Uh, if you want to simplify this, uh, you want it to be all one mesh, because right now it's all separate meshes. If I do an auto group, so you're going to see they're all separate. Um, this is where DynaMesh would come into play, or you could do live boolean. Now, if you have just one subtool, you won't be able to live boolean just one object, unless you go to W, hit Y again, go in your... Um, Go into your gear icon, and then you can do a. What time is it? 7:30. Okay. Uh, remesh by union, and that'll go ahead and do a live boolean. So you can see these are all stitched together now. Uh, if we like that, we can say, "Hey, thanks for doing that. Accept it." And now we hit Control Shift and do Control Shift A. They'll all be all stuck together. Um, now, because they're all stuck together, you can now go into if you want to simplify this because we're going to use a lot. We can go to Z plugin, Decimation Master, Preprocess Current. And we'll go ahead and dumb this down. So right now we're looking at, that's 100,000 polygons. We'll decimate this down to like maybe say 10K, hit 10, enter, hit decimate. Decimates it down to 10K. If that's not enough, just hit five. You don't have to pre-process again, decimate. Or if you want to do like 15, enter, decimate, it'll just kind of step up and down. We'll go, you know what, we'll do, um, let's see two. That's yeah, a little bit low. Let's do four, perfection. So. Also, we can go to brush, insert, let's do, um, I'm not going to use insert primitives, I'm going to use my own base primitives here because it has a simpler, I'm just going to do a z-sphere of 12, and we'll hit x symmetry here, and we'll just put a z-sphere right in the middle of this one, we'll shrink it down just a little bit, there we go, so we got all these together, and again, you could, let me stick that in there a little bit further, there we go, um, you could lie boolean this together, but you know what, I like that, so I'm just going to hit B, Create insert mesh new, and then we'll go back to our working mesh here. Um, I don't know if we want to decorate him out, but we can. Uh, any any objects can be selected that you're going to draw on. However, when you're drawing this on, it is inheriting that object's uh, dynamic subdivision preview mesh um, because dynamic is turned on. So if I don't want that, what I can do is just, and these all have dynamic turned on. I'm going to append just a null. Just a poly mesh 3D, you can kind of see it sitting in here. Let's go ahead and turn X symmetry on, hit E, scale it down so it's out of the way. Now I can use that null to go through here and we can just drag on these things. If it's not going embedded enough, just go in here to your brush here. And we'll go down here to our, what am I looking for here? Uh, geez. Cur um, depth, <laughs> go in your depth here and you can pull that down and then as you drag it out, it'll, um, and you can also conform it to the surface of the mesh, but in this case, it's actually working pretty good. Um, so yeah, and also if you wanted to, if you wanted to have nano mesh functionality, you can go through here, we can duplicate this off. We'll hit shift D and we'll hold down control shift and let's say I want to just do a, like a, a stripe like here. So we'll delete hidden and all along his back, I want nice, um, Nanomesh uh, flowers. So what we can do is with this insert mesh brush selected, we can go to brush, create, create nanomesh brush, and then now we can hover over face, insert, let's go ahead and select it, yeah. Hover over face, insert nanomesh polygroup all, and now we can just do flowers all along the back, or if we had separate polygroups, um, you can go through here, you can do like polygroup checker, and you can just 
polygroup, polygroup all checker. There we go. So now when we insert nanomesh polygroup all, it'll just do like a checker pattern. However, we gotta go grab our flower. Insert nanomesh polygroup all. Hmm. It should just be doing it on one of them, right? Am I crazy? Insert nanomesh polygroup all. What is going on here? Delete hidden. Oh, 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 you know why? So I have X symmetry turned on. Um, so if I do polygroup all now, it'll do. So because the checkerboard was making it non-symmetrical, but it's purple over here and yellow over here, it was dragging on both sides, yellow and purple at the same time and doing polygroup all. Technically it was doing the right thing um, just across uh, symmetry there. So we can go into our nano mesh properties here and we can say, you know what, turn off our show placement because we don't need to see that. Do I have two versions of this thing? Boy, it's doing all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. You know, I thought it would turn off all that, but I guess it doesn't. Hmm. That kind of stinks. But anyway, you have tons of... Um, you can go through here and you can modulate this using all these different things. You can do height here and you can do length if you want to. You can say fit uh, or proportional and then do the size scale that you want to if you want. So all sorts of cool functionality. And again, if you like this, you can do uh, inventory one to mesh or again, like we were saying, you could do BPR, a BPR render um, like so. And then you could do uh, convert BPR to geo. And then we can take these back planes here, delete hidden. And then there you go. I don't know. Cool, thanks for showing up, Barry. Can you explain all the maps used in sculpting and what they're used for? Um, all the maps, I'm not sure what you mean by maps used in sculpting. Are you like baking, like baking maps, like normal map and stuff? Uh, posing high detail modeling in ZBrush. So that you're gonna need, actually Paul Gabry probably has the better uh, walkthrough of this. We might step through his channel. Um, but if you do actually, uh, it's in the ZBrush for ideation. You might be able to find, oh, you know what? Transpose. Z-sphere posing. Let's do pose. There you go. This one. This one will walk you through posing high res. Now you'll need subdivision history. <clears throat> uh, you said to come to work for Certain Affinity, how hard is it to get a job there? It kind of depends on what projects we have ramped up. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't have insight in every department. Uh, I think our our character department, unfortunately, is. Uh oh, our character department's uh, full right now, so not a whole lot of bodies needed there. But um, you can. Oh boy. You can uh, go to our website and see if there's jobs available. Uh, let's turn that on. Um, I and then brushes create polygroups depending on the polygroup dragging the object out. So every polygroup of your base will have to be green. Every polygroup of the green one will be red. Gotcha. Cool. Oh, and if you want, uh, you know, my opinion, uh, we go to my. Let's do this. Because I get asked a question every once in a while. If you go to my, go to my R station here. And there's some cooler stuff on my R station too. If you go to like the boot tutorial, there's some stuff you can dig through there and images and stuff. But if you go to my blog, that's my blog. Yeah. Um, so I go through here and I go like, hey, do I need a college degree? Um, what was this one? This one was motivation, inspiration, and then way down towards the bottom, there is a how to break into the games industry portfolio talk. So there's a little bit on that stuff for you. 
Uh, for details on armor, like Igor or Kato make, you can probably use UV and Alpha, right? Yeah, you definitely can, and you can also uh, get... Uh, you can also try using surface noise for that as well. You can do some really, really ornate stuff and use surface noise. Uh, Glenn... Was it Glenn Patterson? Uh, we go through... Yeah, 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 perfect. So this guy right here, Glenn Patterson, he does a lot of surface noise detailing stuff. So give him a give him a look too. Uh, we do hit a lot of this stuff in the ZBrush series, the intro or the, the whatever it's called, ZBrush for concept and ideation. Uh, but he has a lot of plugins and stuff that make that process a little bit easier for you. Uh, certain affinity just games. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, if we go through here, let's do this. So question was, what are these maps? So if we go to the plugin, I'm just gonna need to show you guys where you could see multi-map exporter here, export option. So a displacement map is, well, a bump map is you have your object, you have your, uh, you have your low res mesh and then you put a bump map on it and it makes it look like you have a lot of detail on it, but it never breaks the silhouette. So if it's a round ball, uh, actually we can just do this. I'll show you. It's a sphere. Make polymesh 3D. And then if we go over here to our surface noise and we do a noise plug and we choose, uh, actually, no, we can just use noise. We'll just do noise here. Okay, so now you can see here, it's like, oh, there's so much detail in here. But if you look at that silhouette, it doesn't actually deform the mesh. However, if you hit BPR, that goes from a bump map to a displacement map. Now along the edges here, you can see it's displacing. So let's go in here and let's go to edit and we're gonna crank up that strength just a bit. So now this will be a little bit more obvious. He's like, okay, oh, I look at this big craggy surface detail, but on, this, on the uh, silhouette, it doesn't change. If you do BPR, this turns it into a displacement map. The displacement map displaces the underlying geometry. So it will, def um, now displacement maps in video games, pretty rare, it's pretty expensive. So, uh, and they also need the geometry to support it. So dynamic displacement, uh, usually what we do is we have a low res mesh and we put a, make a normal map. So a normal map is the same thing as a bump map. Um, it just has, it's like a, there's object space, normal maps, there's tangent space, normal map. Uh, you would use tangent space for something that's like a skinned mesh. So it's um, relative to the object itself. So you have an object, you have vertex normals and they all point out from the surface. Uh, I'm trying to see if ZBrush, has, ZBrush doesn't have anything like that visually. Um, but when you bake a normal map to your object, it's again, it's not gonna change that silhouette, but you will get, as long as you re, when you're rebuilding your, um, your mesh, your low-res mesh, as long as you build in with the silhouette points you need, the normal map will kind of add detail to it. So it'll be like, oh, I have a 1 billion polygon mesh running around a game, when in reality it's only 10,000 polygons, but it looks like a billion polygons because you got all that detail baked in. Um, I mean, occlusion map is just baking that down. Uh, you know what, on my channel, probably the, probably going through like the Substance Painter stuff is probably the best bet on a lot of these. You can kind of see what they're used for and stuff. If you just do a painter search on mine, there's a lot of the, uh, substance painter walkthrough and baking and stuff. Cool. Are Paul and Joseph still streaming or are they focused on the update? I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, you know what? I've been kind of slacking. I haven't been checking like, uh, I usually, uh, I, Paul just, no, Paul just, Joseph just, Paul Gabriel, and, um, Ask ZBrush. I always try to keep updated on those, and I've just been doing a really bad, bad job. So, cool. Uh, how do you convert poly paint to diffuse matte for further work in Substance Designer? So, yeah, you can do that. In fact, we can do that here. Let's do. I think I've got it one already. So streaming. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't him, it was this one. Okay, so if you have something that's poly painted, like so, uh, and if this thing has UVs, which we can go down here to texture map, uh, yeah. So we'll do create new from UV check. And it's like, okay, check, do I have UVs? Yes, I have UVs, there's no red, so there's no overlapping UVs. Um, you can do UV map and that'll give you a gradient that'll show you where your seams are really nicely. So it's like, okay, I do have UVs on this guy. 
Now, uh, for here, you can also do texture map new from polypaint, and that'll give you a texture map baked out to your UVs. Um, you can also go in here to your uh, multi-map exporter, and you can actually bake your uh, normal vector displacement, cavity, export mesh, create. There should be an albedo map in here somewhere. Texture from polypaint, there it is. You can just do it uh, through there as well. There's probably a few more ways to do this. Uh, but you can do that. So on here, you would go clone texture. And then over here in your texture map, you can export this. You may want to go in here to texture map and flip vertically before you export, or export and then flip vertically. I think ZBrush tends to flip things vertically for how it's used in ZBrush. Could you use both normals and displacement? Absolutely. In fact, if I was doing it for like a uh, really nice render, what I would do is on this guy in particular, we have five, five subdivision levels. So I would say, for your, oh, this texture map is still turned on. So for him, I would say, and he had, a, let's say he had a lot of high resolution detail in here. So let's do some high resolution detail. I'm gonna go to my standard brush. We're gonna go to a spray stroke and we're gonna grab this and we're gonna say, uh, Z add it way down. So we can go through here and we can just do some poor detail on this guy. So he has some very high resolution um, detail on him. So now, if I was so inclined, what I could do is I could bake my displacement from subdivision level one to three. So, I th you know what, I'm not positive on the exact steps, but it's something like displacement map, uh, create a displacement map. If, I, if I'm on subdivision level three, I think it will just create a displacement map from subdivision level one to subdivision level three, like so. So when I go to uh, render this, I'll say displacement map um, assigned to Subdivision level three, I wonder if I had to delete it, I don't remember. But you can do a displacement map from subdivision level one to subdivision level three. And you can also, let's go to texture map, turn that off. Uh, you can also say, I wanna create a normal map if I delete lower and then go up to subdivision level three, I can go down here to my normal map or I can use the multi-map exporter to bake it and we can do normal map from subdivision level three to, oh, drop down to subdivision level one. And in fact, I don't even think I needed to delete lower. I could probably just stay on subdivision level three and then I create a normal map from subdivision level three to seven. So use your displacement map to displace your object and then use your normal map. And then you would export subdivision level three with your displacement map and then use your normal map for the rest of the detail. Uh, you can't really see it here because it's just a lot of poor detail, but. Um, hard surface like armor on ZBrush. Uh, my channel has quite a bit of that, but nothing really specific like a walkthrough. If I had time, I would love to sit down and do that. Um, but if you're so inclined, here's where we talk a lot about armor, chest armor breakup, armor panels, stylized shoulder pads. So there might be something in here that'll strike your fancy. And really armor is no different than any other hard surface thing. It really, the hard part is designing it. And after you design it, it's just technique. Cool. All right, everybody. I got some weird stuff to do this morning. Allergy shots, shots and such. So I'm going to call it a day. But thanks for showing up. And uh, I'm going to try to be on my channel Thursday. We'll see how that goes. Again, this these couple months are going to be kind of crazy. But I'll do what I can. And uh, thanks for showing up, everybody. And I will see you uh, next time.